Hi there, I'm Rick, creator of Revelation Skirmish, a destructive combined arms miniatures game that you can either 3D print from home or buy the models from us. Now in this video, I'm gonna be assembling a Core Republic Hunter, specifically the Vigilant pose. Now you can purchase this model from our site, link is in the description below. This version of the kit you can see is pretty well dissected and we went with this route basically with the entire Hunter line. Uh, specifically so that we could get it to be as optimized as possible. Um, without getting into a bunch of back lore about the Hunter in this video, just know that you're going to have, for the Vigilant, the left and the right leg along with the pelvis. You're going to have the torso with the main thruster separate, both shoulders, both uh, middle arm, we just refer to those as the elbow, both forearms, two hands, and then the optic sensor as well as a 50 millimeter base. And as always, notches are going to indicate the rear arc. So as we get started with this, it's probably best to go ahead and glue in the thruster and the optics. And then that way those can go ahead and start beginning to dry while we move on to the legs. So the uh, thruster, you got a hole here in the back of the mech, which, you know, obviously the big thrusters is gonna plug straight into there. Pretty easy to do. Let's do that here now. Okay. That just pushes right in. There's not really any other orientation other than just getting it in there. Uh, then we'll take the little optical sensor here. And uh, there's only really one way that this can face because you're going to have the post or the peg here at the top of it. And you just plug it in here to the hole that is underneath the hunter's nose. And I'm probably gonna have this kind of just aiming straight ahead. Kind of decide how you'd like yours to be posed. So we'll set that down so that can continue to dry. Now with the pelvis, I'd like to go ahead and point out that uh, if you flip it around, you're gonna notice this panel that kind of resembles like a shield. That is going to be the rear of the pelvis. So you're gonna have it flip the other way. And both the legs, when we get it done, we're gonna want it to be more or less somewhere in this area with both firmly planted. So we kinda wanna widen them out a little bit so then that way it feels um, appropriate. And the bottoms of the feet should be pretty level, but if they're not, you can always just take a hobby knife or an exacto knife and always being careful of how you do it I'll just shave that down just a smidge more than what it already was and trying to get it to where it's going to be pretty level by the time that we're all said and done and unfortunately you know one of the things that we try to do when we place the supports and everything for like our STLs the every now and then uh, when you print, you're gonna find stuff that just didn't print exactly level due to the way that the printing process is. And that's okay, that's just part of the hobby. Whether these were injection molds or 3D prints, you would have some sort of uh, challenge or thing that you have to deal with in order to get the models the way that you want them to be. So I'm gonna try to do this quickly with both legs so then that way we can get it to be not only level, but also the way that we want it to be. And as this continues, we're just going to put a small amount of glue here on the one foot because I would like to be able to remove this later once I paint it and then I can get it fully based. The nice textured base and everything will look really nice and uh, colorful. Now, as we get that to finish, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and attach the torso now. Um, because as that finishes drying there on the feet, we can't really move forward with the arms without the torso being mounted, mostly because we don't want to accidentally have the arms bumping into where the torso is going to end up needing to be. So we're going to try to aim for the rear arc being straight ahead. I'm sorry, <laughs> the face being straight ahead opposite of the rear arc. That's normally how I like to pose mine. Okay, now we can go ahead and start moving forward with the arms. Uh, let's do the left arm first. I'd like to go ahead and point out that with the shoulder piece here, 
uh, you'll feel on one side there's going to be what looks like a bolt. It's actually one of the cameras, and it's one of the rear-facing cameras. So if you find the little rear-facing camera on both of the shoulders, it's going to go aim behind the hunter. So we got this one here. This is our left shoulder. Put a little bit here for this. And we're going to want him looking kind of intimidating with his arms. Uh, kind of challenging someone to, to make the first move and to kind of come at him. And now for the elbow. Hmm. Thinking which would I prefer to go ahead and have. I might for this one go ahead and attach. Oh, and I'd like to also point out for the elbow, because uh, some of the poses for the hunter are very similar for the elbow. Uh, some of them are, are very different. It just kind of depends across the different poses. But on one side, you're going to find this kind of H-shaped panel. On the other side, it'll be smooth. So if you find where the H is, it's going to be the outside of the mech. So in this case, the H is on this side. That makes it the left side. The one time I don't end up dry fitting the, <laughs> the piece is when it decides it's absolutely not going to fit. So we're going to go ahead and let that arm continue to dry. We'll move on to the other arm and then we'll come back to this one. So we've got the elbow now plugged into the upper arm or the shoulder section. We're going to go ahead and dry fit this. Yep, that one fits perfect. So. Don't need to worry about that next time. Add the glue. We'll glue it to our fingers. That would always be a good time to not do that. Okay, and we'll glue the upper arm or the elbow piece. Now we're going to go back to the left arm because by now that should be dry and <laughs> hopefully not fighting us as we do this. Now we'll do the right arm. Now for this forearm here. And I like to generally do the hands last, mostly because I think the hands help add the character to the pose. And if I do those early, I might end up with the wrong sort of alignment with everything. And now for the last hand, the right hand. And there we are. So there is the Vigilant Pose of the Hunter. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. If you'd like to purchase this Hunter, you can check the, uh, click the link in the description or go to our web store. All right, thank you guys very much for watching. Talk to you later.